could even watch it in VR or so. So let's have a look at how that algorithm can be implemented. So the basic setting is you've got some virtual viewing position and um, you've got an uh, image plane and then you've got this data. Here in this specific case it is, um, it is an MRI or a CT data set so you've got stacked images that you'd like to display um, which, which yeah, that way form a uniform grid and uh, what you want to do is you want to project that data to the image plane. So what do you do? You uh, shoot primary rays. You shoot not only one ray, but you shoot uh, lots of rays. Um, that is for each pixel of the image plane. And in this very specific case, what you now do is you intersect each primary ray with the uh, bounding box of the data set, see if it intersects. If it doesn't, just fine. Then you assign a background color or dump, do something simple. And if it does, what you do is, in this specific case, you perform a ray marching algorithm to do piecewise integration and eventually determine the color for that pixel, okay? So, different setting, um, similar type of algorithm. This is um, an, a walkthrough through an archaeological data set and the scientist wants to um, I recorded this on the desktop, but typically the scientist would um, perform this walkthrough in virtual reality. And so, I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know. Um, um, okay, where was I? What was I? Um, so typically, the scientist would um, perform this walkthrough in virtual reality. I um, recorded it on the desktop so that you can better view it here. So what, what happens here is the scientist performs a walkthrough through an archaeological data set that was reconstructed with a 3D modeling software, Blender or so, uh, I'm not sure. And um, then he wants to stop at a position and say, okay, I want a beauty shot here. I know head tracking will stop, but uh, give me a beauty shot. So typical algorithm that we would um, use here is uh, path tracing, which is, um, as you may know, implemented in Blender or in Maya or in 3ds Max. But um, for illustration purposes, um, the, this type of algorithm is quite similar. Once again, what you do is you shoot lots of rays through the image plane. And um, once again, you want to determine uh, a final pixel color. And once again, you have uh, lots of inherent parallelism over, um, over image pixels. But um, the algorithm is completely different because what you now do is perform some uh, Monte Carlo simulation, uh, sample some fancy reflection distribution functions, uh, f flip coins to get random numbers and so completely different algorithm but same basic setting. And uh, then what is possible is variations on this theme. So we have the same algorithm, say path tracing, but we want to have a, another primitive one that uh, software does not, uh, or custom software does not uh, provide. S cylinders or freeform surfaces or so, depending on our application. And this is where Visionary comes in. Visionary implements a, a whole bunch of um, algorithms in a generic fashion, just like Boost or the STL does for a more, um, for more general purpose. So does Visionary for um, yeah, for ray tracing related kinds of problems. Visionary has a strong focus on uh, real-time algorithms, so this means that the, um, the intrinsic algorithms that you implement are highly optimized, but it is not a necessity. You can also use Visionary to write offline rendering to, to uh, generate those nice images, you know, for Maya or Blender. Um, yeah, let's have a look at one of the most basic concepts of visionary. It's, it's the uh, scheduler and kernel concept. We talked, um, or I presented to you on one of the slides before, commonalities of the algorithms and similarity and dissimilarities of the algorithm. Um, and the scheduler and kernel concept tackles exactly that. Um, Schedulers are used to generate primary rays. Um, you configure your scheduler with a um, virtual camera position, and um, then the scheduler will, do, uh, will uh, generate lots of primary rays, and depending on the hardware that the scheduler targets, this will be hopefully highly efficient. Um, 
and um, in most cases in in parallel. So um, and then when uh, when generating primary arrays, the uh, scheduler will perform an algorithm, some type of algorithm, which will in most cases um, return a uh, color or yep, maybe some depth or something like that, but uh, such a result. And um, then the scheduler will write the uh, color to an, uh, something we call a render target, which is an output buffer, which can be displayed to a, to a can, can be di directly displayed to the frame buffer, or it could, which can be written to a file or so. And then on the other hand, we have kernels, which are uh, meta algorithms. That is, um, we have, um, a whole bunch of algorithms that Visionary implements, such as uh, texture access, higher order texture access, um, ray acceleration structure traversal, ray primitive intersection, and then the user can construct um, meta algorithms we call, sorry, <laughs> um, that are called uh, kernels. Uh, that, okay, yeah, exactly. And the, we call these meta algorithms uh, kernels. And they are executed by the schedulers, and the schedulers write the final result. So this is. Um, so, I mean, you have your target hardware, GP GPUs, x86 CPUs or so, and then you write a, um, a scheduler, then, or you have a scheduler for that uh, type of hardware. And uh, this is great, because then immediately all the algorithms that you have already implemented in, in the course before um, are immediately parallelized or optimized for that hardware. And uh, this is great. When I started to work at the Institute four or five years ago, um, <laughs> okay. You have still more five minutes. Okay, I will keep it short. Um, okay, when I started to work at the institute a few years ago, um, I, I, I should have. Um, I, it, it was my job to parallelize direct volume rendering, and um, then I parallelized it with a GP GPU program, and um, and. Um, yeah, then a few years later, I, it was my job to parallelize a path tracing algorithm. And, um, and then I had to do all the parallelization once again, which was, uh, I mean, if I had, could have written a revisionary kernel that day, it would, be, uh, would have been great, because then I would be, simply just have retargeted the algorithm and um, used an existing scheduler. Um, so let me give you a tiny example so that you... Uh, that you have an idea of how this works. As I said, um, in Visionary, everything is a, um, is a uh, template. So, so is the most basic class in a ray tracing application array. Um, and so it's basically just a, a, an origin position and a directional vector. And by, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's probably better. I'm not sure, maybe it's, sorry. So, and um, as I said, everything is a template, and by instantiating rays with templates, um, what we say here is that we want to traverse uh, single rays. In ray tracing and real-time ray tracing, a possible optimization is that you uh, traverse uh, multiple rays at once to optimize the data path. And um, in, in that case, by just saying, for instance, by instantiating this template with a SIMD type, for instance, a float 4 or a float 8, then you would, for free, get a uh, packet traversal. Um, SimpleSket is a, a scheduler, um, one of the schedulers I talked about before, and um, SimpleSket is the most basic scheduler they can, that you can imagine. It um, just traverses the image plane and scan lines. It, has, it is not parallelized, but it is great for debugging because there are no parallel threads or so involved. <clears throat> and um, then we create an instance of the scheduler, by passing it the virtual camera position and the aforementioned render target. And then we write a most simple um, ray tracing kernel. The ray tracing kernel in this case is a simple C++ functional. Gets its first parameter um, a ray, the primary ray, that is uh, created by the, uh, by the scheduler and returns a color. Um, a more advanced kernel would, in this case, in here, do some type of traversal with the ray, because this is the most basic kernel one can imagine. It returns only the color white, and that's it. Um, I have to hurry a bit, so I think that I will skip. 
Um, a few slides. So there are lots of built-in kernels and schedulers, highly optimized, and some uh, kernels implement and the building kernels implement some of the mostly used algorithms. But in general, we expect our users to um, implement their own kernels. So they have this bunch of um, um, intrinsic algorithms such as texture access, um, ray bounding volume hierarchy traversal, and so on, as, and all those templates. And we expect that most users will write their own kernels. Um, yeah, there are a few built-in kernels that um, that deal with um, yeah, that mostly deal with surfaces. This is not a necessity. We have seen the uh, volume rendering kernel from before. Um, I think that I will not go into so much detail with the with the following slide because it is. Uh, Um, yep. In general, uh, those kernels can be retargeted. Or our competitors typically have, um, say, um, say um, only support triangles or so, because it's of course an optimization. You have your ray tracer, and then you have lots of rays that take lots of fancy paths. And then you have, in your innermost loop in the ray tracer. When you write a classroom ray tracer or so, you have lots of uh, V-table lookups that determine, is this a sphere? Is this a triangle? Is this a Bezier patch or so? Or is this some uh, primitive that was loaded from a dynamic object or so? And this is, of course, a nightmare from an optimization standpoint. So um, what most of, our, of the other libraries that uh, do ray tracing do is to say, OK, we support only triangles. And um, without wanting to go into the further details, we have means where we, um, on the one hand, perform the only triangle task very efficient, no dynamic branching in the innermost loops, but if, on the other hand, we have compile time mechanisms that can help you to, um, to, um, to um, have multiple types of, types of primitives, custom primitives, and intersect them with rays in a very efficient way. Um, for the details, I'd like to refer you to, you to the examples that come with Visionary. If you clone the Visionary repository, you will get all those examples. There's volume rendering in there. There is an example to target for to, to have simple ray tracing with multiple primitives, and there are different lots of other targets uh, examples. <clears throat> then, if you clone uh, Visionary, you will also get a, a, a plugin for the virtual reality rendering software open cover, which is also open source. You can also download it from GitHub, and you can try if you've got an Oculus Rift. And I think you have to compile it with Windows, so um, drop me a line if you'd like to do so. Because it's, uh, I think there are people that compile open cover with Windows, but most people don't. And um, yeah, this is the end of my talk. And I'm happy to take your questions. So uh, we take two questions. Thank you very much. Questions for Stefan? Yes. Um, yeah, so you talked in detail about the scheduler being adapted to the specific platform you were using, like CUDA or uh, F FPGA. Uh, I was wondering, uh, how do you tackle that for the kernels? Do they have specific implementations for every platform, or can you somehow cross-compile uh, kernels that were written once to be able to compile onto an FPGA, on CUDA, on SSA, Intel? Yeah, we expect, expect that a kernel is written in C++11. So we um, require a, a um, surrounding framework that is at least compatible with C++11. Um, for CUDA, this, this is the case. Um, other GPUs we target, we want to target with a Sickle, the upcoming standard, or the um, already um, specified standard, which has, has no actual implementation. And um, if you want to target SSE, then of course you can do so because the Intel compiler or GCC implements the C++11 standard. But you can't write your kernels in OpenCL or so. FPGAs are a different thing. Um, we are working on this. There is, uh, from a company, um, Silings, they've got a tool. You can write a C++11 code in a high-level synthesis language, which is um, complicated and will probably not work out the way we expected because there are 
porting to an FPGA is a completely different beast compared to a GPU GPU. So I'm um, leaving this out um, by saying, okay, kernels are C++11 code, C++11 plus. Um, maybe in a few years, don't know. Right at the time, it is C++11. And if you if you can stick with this, then um, we can with those that with scheduler support C++11, then it's just fine. Okay. So one more question, if there is. Not for now. So Stefan, you will be around, no? Yeah. So ask questions when you find them in the hallways. Thank you very much.